Welcome back to the Hotel Orloff. We're here in the historic lobby of the incredible Hotel Orloff, built in 1852 here in Rural Retreat, Virginia. Um, right across the street is the train depot that was torn down by the Union soldiers back during the war. And uh, there's been untold amount of celebrities that have uh, come through this lobby in its many uh, 360 years of uh, existence since 1852. I think I'm doing the math right. But anyway, in fact, the man that invented Dr. Pepper once sat right here on this couch that you can't see. Um, hold on. This couch. Trust me, Dr. Pepper once sat there. <laughs> well, we're going to be looking at some uh, bunch of garbage this morning, so uh, come along with me, uh, shall you? Um, very depressed that I didn't get to get on get, get on the four color fossil show last night. Uh, my wife wasn't feeling well. Lots of uh, just. Uh, not good times, you know, uh, be a few weeks, maybe a month, maybe a little more before um, finances get better here. And hopefully um, people will order some copies of uh, the important historic Tomb of Terror television show on DVD-R, which is $20 uh, for each two-hour episode. Uh, and you can get those episodes, episodes 1 through 32, uh, PayPal at Kenneth Weiner, PayPal at K-E-N-N-E-T-H-W-E-I-N-E-R-T, and you can get the, uh, oh, if you order four or more, they're $16 each, so, and that's all postage paid, by the way. Yeah, so that'd be a way to help out, but, uh, yeah, things were a little shaky last night with, uh, you know, worries about, you know, how we're going to get by. But we'll get by, don't worry. Um, oh, another thing I'll do, if for $100 plus postage, I will uh, paint a, a picture for you, you know, on, on a canvas. I'll show you. <laughs> some canvases here uh, ready to go uh, if you need me to paint a picture for you and uh, I've got several sizes and uh, I'll paint on whatever surface you want whatever you want um, if you want an original painting that would be uh, another way to help us out but anyway uh, let's see what do we got here wanted to show you some very um, valuable comic books, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Man from Uncle. There's not enough light here, is there? Just a moment. We'll get this uh, adjusted. Now, if I stand back here, uh, let me move the microphone. I'm going to be going live here in a little bit. I'll try to raise some money doing a uh, live stream here in a little while. Maybe you'll join. Uh, yeah, a little more light here. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Almost dropped the microphone on the dog, Liz. Ouch! Bang my chin. Nothing's going right um, in Joe Biden's America. Almost dropped. The, I did drop the microphone. I banged my chin trying to get it. And uh, world, uh, what a world! Look at this man. 1965, November. 
Okay, so this that means this came out in September. So I was five months old when this comic book came out. Sorry, it doesn't have a cover, but you know those are the breaks. Um, artwork's uh, actually not too bad. Of course, the gold key uh, cover, you know, the covers were always what grabbed you. This would have been a photo cover. This is Man from Uncle number three from November of 65. Yes, this was uh, television's answer to James Bond. The James Bond movies at that point. Uh, when this show came on the air, Man From U.N.C.L.E., there were already three James Bond movies. There was Dr. No from Rush With Love and Goldfinger. And um, Thunderball came out, at, I believe, at Christmas time of 1965. I could be wrong. I, it was a 1965 movie. I'm pretty sure it was Christmas. Maybe it was summer, in which case this, is, this comic book was out right as uh, Thunderball was hitting theaters, the fourth James Bond movie. So, I need to get these filed with my other uh, Gold Key comics. I just got a stash of um, coverless <laughs> Gold Key comics from Kevin Johnson, the proprietor of Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona, uh, an important uh, comic store, a historic comic store. That comic store was opened in 1862. It's almost as old as this hotel. And um, it's been selling comic books from, uh, I mean, it's, you, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, this is issue number four from January of 66. How about that? Again, no cover. So that's three, this is four. Will the next one be five? He said, why would you want a coverless comic book? Well, CGC considers these more valuable because coverless comics are more rare than comics that have covers. So collectors seek after coverless comics. Um, man, every day my eyes get bad. That's another source of depression. Man, I can't even... I, I think that's five, which would make sense if they're, if they're in order. How about this? There were no ads in these Gold Key comics, at least not at this point. Yeah, art's not too bad. Um, I think one thing that threw kids is, is the lettering sometimes in the Gold Key comics, and the, the art just never was quite as dynamic usually in the interior has a uh, rival comic book companies so that's uh, lots of uh, fun reading about the uncle agents uh, fighting against thrush it's number seven yeah these are in order how about that Oh yeah, Jet Dream was uh, an original character that Gold Key came up with and then she got her own title for a little bit. Jet Dream is kind of like an M Appeal kind of uh, character. Hey, how about that Marjorie Taylor Greene? Did you see her uh, yesterday at the IRS whistleblower um, testimony? That was something else, man. Well, is this going to be number eight? Oh, it says number nine, I believe. Number nine. Yes, indeed, this is the Spirit of St. Louis affair. Every title on uh, Man from Uncle was uh, the something or other affair, the Hotel Orloff affair, or something like that. Oh, here's another coverless comic. This was, uh... now this, where are my glasses? 
This is the shadow. They're, they're trying to do a comic book of the shadow, right, in the 1960s, and this is from uh, January of 65. All these coverless comics are from probably the original owner, um, and more than likely the covers were torn off by, by the newsstand uh, dealer, and this, these were like handed off to their kid or something. Yeah. Ooh. There's a page torn out in here. Look at that. You can tell there's a page torn out of this valuable comic. Look at this ad. I've always loved this ad. Anyway, the shadow, they're reinventing the old uh, pulp character and radio character as a superhero with a costume. And it didn't work. And I'm pretty sure this was put out by Harvey Comics. Uh, Look at that. That's a great ad. There's some great ads in here. That's the problem with Gold Key is they didn't have ads. You think, well, ads are, are half the fun of comics, you know. So when you get these uh, collections put into omnibuses or omnibuy or whatever, they don't have the ads. And that's that robs you of a lot of the experience of being a comic book connoisseur. Here's uh, last of the coverless books. This is an issue of Honey West. Honey West was Anne Francis. You know her from Forbidden Planet. And uh, there would have been a great photo cover on this comic, but it doesn't have the photo cover. I uh, had a horrible submarine sandwich for breakfast because that was all I could afford. Um, Horrible, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so you got to see some coverless comics. Now, now let's work up to the next course. Uh oh, the internet went out. I was gosh darn it. I'm having a lot of Wi-Fi. It's almost Christmas uh, here in Roll Retreat, Virginia, and uh, trying to get my Wi-Fi going. So, actually, I'll take you along with me. What the heck? That's the only thing good about this channel is that uh, most channels you're just in one location, and this channel I, I take you around wherever I go. Some people hate that. They say it makes them dizzy because of my horrible camera work, but I say. That's what makes us different from all the others. Um, so we're checking the internet here. Internet connection, watch it be a red X. Will it be a red X? Oh, well, it says uh, it works. Ah. All right, let's get back uh, to it. Um, so I... Uh, Come on, what? Oh, tomorrow, Good goodness gracious, there's a Barbie movie coming out. That's That should be exciting. Um, well, I added this monster channel. Um, it, I used to have it on my uh, Roku, but it um, it didn't work. Now I've, I've got it on here and it looks like it has a bunch of horror hosts, but they all seem to be pretty lame. In this monster madhouse, I don't know what this one's supposed to be. Let's see what it is. Monster madhouse. Uh, it looks like it's a bunch of uh, like modern cartoons that are probably going to be horrible. Let's see, because everything modern is horrible, right? I need to shake. See, look at this this kind of thing. Yeah, already you can tell, okay, I need to delete that app. I mean, that's all I need to see. Okay, so I'm going to Rumble. Rumble is the alternative to YouTube where they don't censor as much. But, you know, how long will that last? Probably not long. So here's uh, the live feed of uh, this channel that you're not allowed to mention on YouTube. So I'll go there and see if it works now. <sighs> you 
I think it's working. Oh, we got a new vacuum cleaner. Did I show you? I showed you. I was building it a couple of weeks ago, or when it was. I have no track of time. Oh, this here, ladies and gentlemen, this is the device that I will make your DVD in. I put the. See that? I put the original DVD here and your blank DVD here, and after about 15 minutes, your disc is ready. And then I put it in a in a case and get it off to you. And this is a. I should take you around on a tour of things. This uh, this is from a re-release of King Kong in the 50s. There's a poster for Tomb of Terror, a spook show from back in the great old days. Okay, what was I up to? Oh, the vacuum cleaner. Let me show you that, how it works. Um, so, um, here's the vacuum cleaner. This is a Bissell. So, um, I turn it on, and then I can control, I press the button up here, and that's for hardwoods and that's for carpeted area. So it'll um, clean carpets. So um, see how that works. Actually, I need to put some liquid in it. I just, rem or did, yeah, I need to fill it up with liquid. Um, let's go do that. That's what wasn't working as well. Um, God, I look like a bum I haven't shaven. I'm like torn. Do I grow my beard back or do I uh, remain clean shaven? One of the uh, people in the chat said, it makes you look 10 years younger when you don't shave, but then but the beard kind of hides my fat jowls and all that. I don't know if I've ever shown you this. A little bathroom decoration. Yeah, we, we had to get this this main pipe changed. And I still owe like $1,300 to the plumbers that a block away from me that did this. But they had to cut away part of the wall, see? And, and, and so I need to get them paid. And then I've got to get this sheetrock fixed and then all this wallpaper off. And then... Um, um, man, this hideous wallpaper. My wife has always wanted it gone. And then once uh, that's done, we can paint it. And then I'd really like this this door, the paint to be taken off of this door and have it restored to uh, looking like it did. You know, this would, if we could, I don't, I don't, I don't know why people paint wood like that. Um, but I have no idea what I'm doing, how to remove paint. I'm sure someone would know how, but anyway. Um, so let me show you how this works. So I've got to uh, fill this container with uh, water. And since I'm going to be doing a large area, I'll, I'll fill it up to here. And... Um, Man, that live stream last night was great. Everybody was, everybody had great books, and, and Meyer Greenblatt was showing some amazing uh, monster magazines and magazines. And man, I didn't know he had all that stuff. Putting too much water. See, so the, the water goes to that line and then you put in this formula um, and the formula gives it a kind of sudsing action yeah there's a lot of you know I thought I could live on my retirement and that's not so easy to do with the 
Bidenomics. So, um, it's, uh, it's been a little rough. Okay. Then I, I put the, this formula into the... I gotta go look at my Wonder Woman books because Jambo did a show recently where he showed some Wonder Woman books with Adam Hughes covers and then he showed them again last night on Four Color Fossils and I could have sworn I owned that issue of uh, where the modern Wonder Woman is is surprised and looking at her golden age, the golden age version of herself. I swear I've got that book. I need to go check here in a minute if I do. Either that or I've just seen that cover a lot. I didn't realize uh, he was saying it's a real valuable book. And um, I looked at myconicshop.com and yeah, it's like a hundred dollar book. So I need to go check. In my W box. Okay, so you gotta you gotta close this really tight or it'll leak. So I put this back in. All right, now it should be more impressive when I start it up. Okay, so we'll start it again. Now it's working. Anyway, so I'll press this button when I go forward and I'll release it when I go back. Watch. And it does a great job. It, you don't realize how much hair is on the floor until you... Uh, all right, so enough of that. I don't think you paid to watch this show to see someone use a vacuum cleaner. You're, you're here to, not that you paid anything. So, But some of you paid for episodes of the Tomb of Terror that are available. You buy, just contact me and I'll get you episodes of Tomb of Terror. If you want to order a whole lot of episodes of Tomb of Terror, that would be fantastic. Because that would... Uh, Allow me to get some of the stuff I have on hold at uh, Gotham City Comics and get it uh, shipped here. And then when I get the stuff, then it will make for great content, as the morons say, or a great um, material, or a great uh, just make for better episodes. Because I, you know, I see everybody on the Four Color Fossils, and they've got all these books, um, but. Um, we here in rural retreat, Virginia, are humble folk. We aren't that uh, rich that we can't afford all those, all that uh, wonderful stuff. So, Fletcher Hanks. Fletcher Hanks, one of the great comic book artists. There's this book, I've seen this book for uh, I think I've seen this book for about the last 60, 70 years. Every time I go into a comic store, you see this book. You Shall Die by Your Own Evil Creation is the name of this uh, book. If you're looking for it on Amazon, type that in. And actually, just type in uh, Fletcher Hanks. Because there's only one Fletcher Hanks. Um, Fletcher Hanks was an artist like no other artist. Um, man, they've got reviews from all kinds of people on the back. Jules Pfeiffer. Is he still alive? Uh, Publishers Weekly, The Village Voice, R. Crumb. Wizard Magazine. Anyway, Golden Age artist. But he's an insane Golden Age artist. <laughs> I mean, he's insane, and that's a wonderful thing. Um... Uh, Fletcher Hanks and his art was uh, utilized. Yeah, there's an early James Gunn movie called Super with, uh, I forget the name of the actor, decides to become a superhero, 
but he doesn't have any superpowers. He just has a hammer that he uses to hit people with. And then this girl that he meets in a comic store becomes his sidekick, kind of like his Robin, played by... I don't think you're supposed to say Ellen anymore, uh, Paige, but, I mean, she was a girl at that time. But, um, anyway... And that was a that's a great movie. It's called Super. Uh, I'm not sure how you could see it. I'd love to have that on Blu-ray. Um, that movie told me when I first saw that he would be good making comic book movies because he clearly knows comic books, and he knows he, he knew he knew who Fletcher Hanks was. Not everybody knows who Fletcher Hanks is, but but I, I've met people that aren't into comic books that much that have this book because they, they're aware, uh, they just are aware of how cool this is. Dang, this is cool. Anyway, there's a sale going on at Gotham City Comics for the next few days. It being the 20th, it'll expire on the end of the month. It's, uh, he's having Christmas in July. And so when you get a book like this, you get a, a, another book, the same value or, or, or less, for free. It's buy one, get one. Uh, or as the morons call it, BOGO. I didn't, my, I didn't know. Boy, that was about to sound bad. I was going to say, my wife had to explain to me what BOGO meant, but I just said only morons use that term. So I, I did, <laughs> that would have come across badly. No, but my wife was aware because she knows acronyms. Being younger than me, she understands BOGO. What the heck does BOGO mean? Oh, that means buy one, get one. How are you supposed to know that? I guess you have to Google it. Um, I don't know. Now, I was saying uh, I would be available to do paintings for you. And uh, I did a painting for Kevin at Gotham City Comics, or I did a couple of paintings. He, he wanted me, he got... They have these comic books now with blank covers. They just have the logo. And then you get someone, either yourself or you hire someone. Boy, I look bad. Look at these dark rings. I look worse every day. Um, maybe that's why God made your eyes go bad when you get older. Then you don't see how horrible you look in the mirror. But uh, unfortunately, I still see how horrible I look. Anyway. So he sends me this blank uh, comic book with just a white cover and white back. And I painted the, with acrylics, I painted the uh, cover front and back in exchange for a big hard cover of Erie Publications, all the covers of the whole history of Erie Publications. So it was Mad Balls versus Garbage Pell Kids. Because I, I, I took a picture but before I sent it to him, but, but he, he made a color scan for me with his uh, scanner, so that's what it looks like. So it's it's the little garbage pail kid, uh, Dracula, and there's poop on the ground uh, on the rainbow, and he's throwing poop at the mad balls coming at him. And this is a takeoff on a cover of the Silver Surfer, where Thor is here and about to hit the Silver Surfer coming down this way with his hammer. So I painted that so I could paint something like this for you. My wife said you can't really tell what's going on. You can't really tell he's throwing poop. Uh, I, I, I did my best. I can't promise you that I'm a great artist. That's why I only charge $100 a painting, which is ridiculously cheap. Um, but the internet went out. Back. It just went to a black screen. I think the somebody is uh, messing with his uh, feed. Okay, so that's the front cover and the back cover looked like that. The back cover of the comic. I drew this uh, close up. It's like life size uh, garbage pail kid. So you could actually make it into a mask. It actually looks better than my own face. Um, See. Hi. Let's see. Anyway, so I could paint a close-up of a garbage pail kid vomiting for you, 
that was very easy to paint this back cover it didn't take me long at all uh, so I'll paint dozens of paintings for you uh, just contact me seriously uh, I'll paint anything within reason I don't want to paint anything obscene or you know but you wouldn't ask for something I don't remember which one was the one I got free. Probably this one. This is the art of Ramona Fraden, who I used to call Fredone because I thought, oh, it's like a Spanish name, but no, it's not pronounced Fredone, it's Fraden. And I know that only from YouTube because how often do you meet people in your life that even know who she is, much less know how to pronounce her name? Now I've met people online on YouTube, uh, fellow collectors that like good comics. Um, anyway, she is uh, um, this amazing artist that drew the Metamorpho comic. Metamorpho has just been cast for James Gunn's movie universe. She drew Aquaman. That's what Aquaman's supposed to look like, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. But, um, Anyway, here the Aquaman movie's in trouble. They had a scene at the end where he talks to Batman, played by Ben Affleck, and they've just cut that out because that would make people expect Ben Affleck to be in the next Batman movie that James Gunn's putting out called Brave and the Bold, and that's going to be a different guy. Because basically with this new movie that's Superman Legacy, James Gunn's starting the whole DC movie universe over. And... His casting so far has been um, spectacular. Spectacular choices for the guy playing the young Superman. A spectacular casting choice of the woman that plays the marvelous Mrs. Maisel to play um, Lois Lane. And he's got Metamorpho and um, Hot Girl and some other characters in that movie. So. Um, I have a lot of confidence, again, in James Gunn. And I was troubled by his Twitter history, but I try to forget that. She was also, later in life, did the Brenda Starr comic strip. She took over that comic strip, so she's... Uh, and I remember in the 70s, they had her doing the Super Friends comic book. So... Yes, indeed. Ramona Fraden. There's also a book out about Marie Severin that was put out by Two Morrows, I believe. She's another one of the great female artists. There are great female artists. There just aren't as many. Um, Kennedy Jr. sure uh, his voice that's uh, worse than my voice um, okay our fighting forces DC war book right around this time period they had some great uh, great covers that were designed in uh, for want of better, per, what is the stupid expression? Um, I will say that this is very influenced by Will Eisner and the spirit, this kind of layout where the, the logo, the losers, you know, you expect it up here, but it's incorporated into the background. That's a very Will Eisner thing to do. This is the very end of the Silver Age, in my opinion, when DC went from 25 cents back down to 20 cents. That's when the Silver Age started for me. Oh, here's some Alex Toth art. You can instantly tell 
That's another name I used to pronounce Alex Toth. And I, I didn't know how to pronounce it, but, uh, and I'm wrong. It isn't his art at all. It's Eric Estrada. Wait, Eric Estrada? Rick Estrada. Not, it's Rick Estrada. It is not the guy that, from the Chips TV show. Um, but I'll tell you, that does look like Alex Toth art, but, uh, and Alex Toth was the guy that designed the look of the Super Friends for TV, which, um, so everything's kind of tying in what we're talking about. Look at this ad, the monster-sized monsters and the Polaris nuclear sub. That's the problem, one of the problems with modern comics, oh man, there's Severin art in here. This has got a lot of great art in here. This is John Severin and John, oh man. Come on, man. There's too much good stuff in this. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. It's a World War II carnival where you get to fish and ships. Look at that. Pop old Adolf. Um, John Severin and his sister Marie Severin, their art is very similar, but this is definitely John Severin art. He did a lot of art, war art for um, Sergeant Nick Fury and his Howling Commandos over at uh, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos at Marvel. This is 135. And see, by this point, it had become a 20 cent book. So this is the beginning of the Bronze Age. Look at this beautifully designed cover. What's one of us losers doing with that Nazi? Look at that. Brilliant Joe Kubert cover. Very nice uh, condition in this book here. I don't know what that green sticker means there. That was either a pricing thing at some point in some store, or it could have been in a library. Beautiful art in these losers books. This makes me wanna seek out more of these. Um, yeah, I didn't, I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't know or I'd forgotten that Severin was uh, the main artist in the interior of this book. Okay, now we've moved forward a little bit where the price is about to change again still only 20 cents that means it's about to go up to 25 cents this means this is probably a few years later 1974 oh this is jack kirby art yeah october november 1974 the losers are fighting forces it's the cop you gotta be you know a neophyte collector would look in the price guide or online under the losers, but the title of the comic is actually Our Fighting Forces. Um, yeah, it's Kirby art. This must have been right before Kirby split DC and went back to Marvel. <laughs> Kirby went over to DC and... Uh, um, his books sold well, but it looked to DC like they weren't selling well. So he just kept getting books pulled from him and kept being put in. And the reason is, is that uh, there were all these dealer, comic book dealers. Um, not as many as there are now, but they were speculating that the Kirby at DC, it was, those comics were going to be highly valuable. So they'd go to the distributor before the books left the distributor and went to the newsstand and they'd buy out of the back door thousands of books to take and, and sell off mail order or a few. In some cases, they already had comic stores in 1970, 71. Places like San Francisco, they had already storefront, you know, stores, you know, places next to giant college, universities, whatever, or places with a lot of hippies, whatever. Um, 
Um, anyway, so when they get the cells back and how many sold, it didn't count the ones that had been pulled and taken out. And, and that's why uh, Kirby was given the bad news that that uh, they hadn't sold well. And then it's like, hey, you go, this book's not selling well. We're going to have to cancel it. Okay, this is 166. I already have this issue, but I bought a pile of Losers comics and uh, because I'm a loser. But anyway, um, this one actually has a Mark Jewelers insert, which is so exciting. Isn't that thrilling? Some people, you can tell it's a Mark Jewelers book because it it has a, a kind of a stiffness to it, almost like there's a backing board inside of it, because there is. So you can usually tell, um, sometimes you can tell by a star on it, you know, a little uh, stamp of a star, and there isn't one on the front or back. That means that was put on there by the cashier when you bought it at a PX, at an um, Army, Navy base, uh, Air Force base, whatever, military bases. There's. I've never been in the military. But my dad was in the military and retired when my, at the end of my sixth grade year. So before sixth grade, when I was getting into comics, I bought a lot of my comics at PX's, which is also called a base exchange. And basically, in the army bases that I was at, um, you would have a store about the size of a Target. And that was called the PX. And they sold clothes and electronics and records. Of course, they didn't have CDs before 76. Eight tracks, all the stuff that, that, that a GI would need or an officer, whoever shopped in there, and their families, their wives, their children. I guess husbands, I guess, you know. But back then, you usually think of the military being guys which is why these ads are in here. Uh, a lot of GIs, you know, they're separated from their girlfriends, in some cases wives, you know, and then they're, they, they put this, uh, this little supplement in for the books that were at military bases, and then they would uh, send off for a ring to uh, make their uh, girlfriend all happy. And, uh, 14 payments, $15 each. Um, I, 14 times 15, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, what that ring cost. Young Lovers, $225. 15 payments, $15 each. $15 twice monthly. Yeah, but see, back then, $15 was, was a little bit more than it is now. But see, these kind of rings you could get and you just don't tell your girlfriend you got it from the inside of a comic book that you were reading. But anyway, um, that supplement in there, some collectors will pay more for it because it's, uh, you know, uh, more rare. Um, the first appearance of Venom in Spider-Man or whatever, I remember looking that up because I found one that had the supplement in it, and it's like the it was like eight hundred dollars as opposed to two or three hundred dollars. It seems like I don't know these prices may be old now. It seems in some cases people will pay a lot more for that. Okay, this one's not in as good a shape. It's one sixty nine, but it's a perfectly good uh, reading copy. Now we're up to thirty cents. And we've got this hate, hated uh, barcode. Um, this is kind of a dirty book. This is uh, when they talk about uh, cleaning books. This is the kind of thing they're talking about. Uh, some kids were a little dirtier, or they lived in more dirty environments. The art remained consistently good in the Losers book. Um, George Evans. Well, that's why. Um, for some reason, this book, uh, the art, it just attracted great artists. Don't, can't tell you why. Ugh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen.
we still on? As soon as this broadcast ends, I'm going to go in there and get on live and start begging people to buy my disc, my Tomb of Terror. This is, um, this will be on my comic book wall if I ever get a comic book wall. It's John Wayne, number 24. It's John Wayne Adventure Comics. That's a nicely designed cover. Hope rapidly fading for passengers and crew of airliner reported to have crashed in the California desert news bulletin. And uh, get a talking parakeet. And they're going to send a talking parakeet to you by mail. And <laughs> just imagine, help, let me out, the parakeet. It's the new 1953 Space Command Vibromatic Walkie Talkies. Don't you wish cell phones looked like that? And I wish smartphones in some ways were never invented. Ooh, some nice artwork here. Death climbs the pyramid. There he is, John Wayne. Favorite comic stars. You've got uh, Gene Autry, Little Abner, Alice from Alice in Wonderland. You've got Spaceman, only six ninety five. dollars That was a lot of money, I'll have you know. Um, yeah, it's nice, nice uh, artwork, nice... Look at this. Oh, wonderful. It starts with an ad for Lionel Trains. John Wayne in the desert. <sighs> the John Wayne book isn't just a Western. They have John Wayne in different kinds of adventures. It's the common denominator is it's always John Wayne. Not that I'm an expert in this comic, but I'd like to get more John Wayne books because uh, John Wayne was born just 54 miles away from where I'm at. So maybe uh, the Hotel Orloff can be, uh, when, when in town to see John Wayne's birthplace and the house he was born in, stop by Rural Retreat and uh, see another uh, John Wayne exhibit here in the Orloff Museum. This is a book you know, I'm not entirely sure. I, I thought I had this, but I'm not sure because I, I remember seeing this cover at Duncanville Books like all the time and thinking, I need to buy that. And then, but I just can't remember. Did I finally buy it? <laughs> or do I just remember seeing it a lot, not in my own collection, but someone else's collection? This is a... Uh, Yeesh. It's not in very good shape, but it's okay. Um, it is uh, Superman's Girlfriend number 72. And this copy belonged to someone named, Sh someone named Schaefer. I always thought this cover was really cool with these uh, weird flying fish forming... Uh, yo, that's the new thing, right? That they say that Fireworks are bad for the environment. They cause climate change. So now they are sending drones up, lighted drones in place of uh, fireworks somewhere in China. I don't know. That's going to be their new thing. Of course, what powers the drones? Uh, probably something that's bad for the environment. But anyway, I hear they're, it's, it's all right because they're going to kill 200,000 cows in Ireland to help with climate change. Just saw it on the news, so we don't have anything to worry about anymore. Just kill the cows. I mean, they're telling farmers they have to kill their cows. It's just insanity, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, if you've ever seen The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, you will know what a great uh, choice that actress, that I can't remember her name, is for the part of Lois Lane. And the guy that did the art for Lois Lane, Kurt Schaffenberger, always loved his art. Another one of those uh, artists that's um, 
people don't give enough credit to. There's his signature. At least they let him sign his artwork. This is what I was going Ugh, about. The back cover has a little bit of a problem. Some kid, Miss Schaefer, whoever that late girl is back in the 60s, messed her comic book up. Oh, last night uh, there was some controversy about this Wonder Woman kit. Um, uh, uh, Meyer Greenblatt showed the ad on the back of Monster World magazine from about 1965 or 66 for a Wonder Woman model kit. And then people were saying, I've never seen that. That must be impossibly rare. And then someone in the chat said, Maybe that's just a prototype, prototype, and they never actually went into production on the model kit. And I will show you uh, the uh, answer to that question here in a moment. Um, um, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, let me show you before this episode ends. I have one more comic to show you, then I'm going to go upstairs and look through my Wonder Woman's. Uh, uh, because I was trying to see if I had that, uh, Adam. Uh, anyway, here, um, open this up. Oh, this goes with the Mr. Hyde. That goes up here. See, the Wonder Woman kit does exist. That's an original Wonder Woman kit. It just wasn't in production as long as um, the other kits. And it wasn't re-released in the 70s like Superman, Batman, the Lone Ranger were. By the way, this is the, the Batman I'm talking about. That's a, that, this one was painted at the factory. See, that's why you, they used a stencil for his belt. That was meant for store display. And this Superman here, if you can see it, when he, uh, that was painted by Joe Riley, the guy that you know from the hypnotic eye. You see it there? That Carol Borland was painted by me. Joe Riley painted both of these Elviras here. Let me see if I've got it framed right. And that's Joe Riley's Slee stack. I think someone's made a new slee stack model kit, but this is his from the 90s. Man, uh. Anyway, he's got a rough voice. He's got some disease that messed up his voice, and uh, I hear. People saying, uh, well, I haven't heard people, but I've heard one person saying, I, uh, this lady was saying, oh, shoot, this lady was saying, I could never vote for him. He's got such a horrible voice. It's like, man, if you had voted, Abraham Lincoln never would have been president. I mean, if you're going to vote for people based on how their voices look or how they look, you know, that's the type of person that's going to vote someone like Gavin Newsom in just because they they look like a movie star. Oh, they're so dreamy. No, you can't do that. <laughs> um, Abraham Lincoln didn't have a gravelly voice. You think he would. He said, well, how do you know what Abraham Lincoln's voice sounded like? Abraham Lincoln lived before they invented magnetic tape or the, or the ability to record Yes, there was no recording device. We have no recordings of the voice of Abraham Lincoln or George Washington. We can only go by first-person accounts, people that actually were there, that heard Lincoln speak, that wrote down on paper and in books what Abraham Lincoln sounded like. And then we read that those sources, and then we know because we read. And Abraham Lincoln apparently had a high-pitched voice, believe it or not. For a guy that's like nine feet tall, he was like a Martian Thark, you know? He would hit the ceiling here. And uh, you would think he just looks like a guy that would have a you know, deep voice, but he didn't. It was a... And this one may be a book I already have too, but I'll go check here in a second. But I wasn't sure, so I got another copy. 
<laughs> That's the greatest ad in the world. Um, wonderful. Jimmy Olsen was a great character. I haven't heard any casting for Jimmy Olsen in, uh, in James Gunn's Superman movie. So let's just hope that he uh, puts Jimmy Olsen in it. Because, you know, that Zack Snyder idiot had Jimmy Olsen killed off within the first five minutes of uh, Superman v. Batman. What is the deal with the V? Is uh, Instead of being Superman versus, why did he call it Superman v? Is that some kind of lawyer talk? I, I, or is it from wrestling? Or I don't know. I don't know why the V... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, head on upstairs. <sighs> let's see, we're at 56 minutes and 17 seconds in to the broadcast. I never know how long each episode will go because I'm just going by how much free memory I have on my clogged iPhone. Okay. So we're up to the comic book room. I really am bummed that I didn't get on the Four Color Fossils show last night. I mean, I really... It was really good lineup. Everyone had great comics. And, uh, what am I looking for? Oh, yeah, let me see if I have, first of all, oh, this is one of my stu stuffed animals from when I was like five or six. Um, he lost an eye. So that's his original eye. He lost an eye here. I had to get one from a store. See, it's one of these Google eyes and glue it on and fix them. And this stuffed animal was a hand-me-down from my older brothers from the 50s. So he's precious to me, and he's wearing a shirt. This sweater is a sweater I had when I was a little kid from Hemisphere in 1968, the Big World's Fair in San Antonio. And that's where we lived at the time. That's where I was born. And uh, so that teddy bear is uh, important to me. It's kind of like uh, Woody and... Well, no, Drew, don't be going crazy in here. Woody and Toy Story... Let's see how the cats are doing. Oh, I've got to empty the dehumidifier. See there? Let's do that. Um, I just drew the dog. Um, okay, how do I empty the dehumidifier? Um, let me set you guys down. Maybe you can watch the cats while I... Uh, Empty the dehumidifier. Tell you, I was really depressed when I started this show, and now I feel better because there's something about oh, I spilled a little water. I gotta get a paper towel. Something about doing the show it cheers me up um, because I feel like I'm hanging out with friends, even though you know you're not really here at the moment. You'll be here later, and uh, I. Uh, Um, it's nice to have friends, and that's why um, Four Color Fossils is an important sh show to me because it uh, get, that's when I get to hang out with people. Uh, that's why sometimes I'll go live and I'll just stay on for seven hours ridiculously long 
because I'm just kind of lonely. <clears throat> that water left on the hardwood floor. Um, I don't know. That's, um, sometimes everything seems to be going wrong in your life and in the world. And uh, it's just nice to be able to talk to people. And so, uh, so when you go on live and talk for a long time and then you come back and and you've lost two subscribers, it's like, gee, I, I, it's kind of kind of hurts your feelings a little bit. I know it's silly. Here the dehumidifier says we have 70% humidity. Therefore, that humidifier is going. Uh, fantastic. Okay. All right. So I'm looking to see if I have those Lois Lane books. Let's see. Where did I put them? Um, that's Lois Lane 76 and Lois Lane 72. Is that what it says? Yeah. 72, 76. That's 54. Was it again? 72. <clears throat> oh, uh, okay. I, I need a neck I need both hands, so I gotta put this down. Stand up. Okay. Again, 72. 97. What? 95. Oh, these aren't in the right order. What? 93. 83. 70. 93. So what is... 95 is out of order. How does that, how does this stuff happen? 70. What was that again? 70. Then to 83. Yeah, I don't have that one. This is a great cover. Catwoman. Okay, so put that in there. Um, 76. Seriously? Okay, all right. So that's that. Kind of like to see what how I'm doing with our army at war. Well, look, a slabbed comic. What I always make fun of, but I have one of them. Let's see. Sergeant Rock, Sergeant Rock, Star Spangled War. Okay, there needs to be a DC War Books um, 
one. Superboy, where is that? There it is. It was right below the Superman book I was just looking at. Okay. Okay. Our army at war. GI combat. Sorry. Wait a second. GI combat. She got war. Wait, Sergeant Rock. What? Oh, I see. I've got to look in the O's and the in the Bronze Age, because this is the only Silver Age one I've got of our fighting forces. So. Here we go. Here's our fighting forces 117, the Hellcats. Um, oh, here's a beautiful one, number 87. Look at that one. One thirty four. Okay, this is 134 in the box here. Oh, I put everything in here. The War Comics, even the Bronze Age, I put in here. Here's 139. Um, this one is uh, 135. And that one was 134. Okay, so the one after that. Um, Okay. Our fighting forces. Okay. So yeah, I found another one.